Hello, Dr. J again. Uh, we're going to continue our discussion on trigonometric identities for communication systems. In an earlier video, we showed the product of these two cosine functions, omega c and omega m, having those type of frequencies, is equal to the sum and difference frequencies of two sinusoids. Now we're going to show that this identity res also results in a sum and difference frequency, except we're dealing with sine functions here and here with a weight of one half. So this time it's multiplying sine omega c t times cosine omega m of t results in the sine omega c plus omega m t, all this divided by two, added with sine omega c minus omega m t divided by two. Again, we have basically multiplying two sinusoids resulting in the sum of frequencies and the difference of frequencies. And then finally, we're going to multiply these two functions here, these two sine functions, and it will also result with the same relationship up here, shown here and here, except we have a minus sign this time. So here are our sine and cosine functions based on Euler's formula. Here for the sine we have a difference of complex exponentials and for the cosine we have a sum of our complex exponentials. So we're going to multiply these two functions, the sine omega c t multiplied by the cosine omega m of t, and then we're going to substitute its corresponding Euler's definition. So here for the sine omega c t, we have sine e to the j minus e to the minus j divided by 2j. That's our definition of the sine. And for the cosine, we have the same type of relationship, e to the j plus e to the minus j divided by 2. Since we have a common base in our numerator, we just simply add or subtract the exponents. So for this term and this term, we have the sum of the exponents omega c plus omega m. Put it in parentheses so you can multiply it by j and t. The second term involves e to the minus j omega c t. That's here. And e to the minus j omega m t. That's here. So it involves these two terms. And we have a minus sign here as a result of the minus sign shown in this term. Again, in the denominator, we have 2 times 2j coming from here and here. The third term, we have e to the plus j omega c. That's due to this term. And e to the j minus omega m of t. And that's dealing with this term. So this here is a result of multiplying this term with this term. And finally, the fourth term we have negative j omega c t due to this term and then a minus minus becomes a plus j omega m of t and that's a result from this term right here so for this last term is a result of mul multiplying these two inner terms so now what we're going to do next is group these two terms because now if you look here and here at the arguments we see it as the same omega c plus omega m in here and here. So if you look at this, this is in the form of e to the j minus e to the minus j. And that's what we have here, except we replace the argument with omega c plus omega m in our sine function definition. Again, this is weighted by 2. Okay? Because we already used the 2j to give us our definition of the sine, and then this 2 is a result here of weighing this sine function by one half. Now if you take the last two terms here and here, we get a same form and we get a sine function except it's, we have a difference in the argument. So a difference between omega c and omega m. So there you have it. Multiplying these two uh, sinusoids results in the sum and difference frequencies. In this case we have sine 
and here we have cosine when you multiply the sine and cosine you get basically two sine functions with frequencies that are added together and two frequencies that are subtracted so one last showing of using Euler's formula in terms of multiplying two sinusoids. Here for our carrier we have a sine function. Here for our message we have another sine function. And we're just going to basically multiply these two functions together and substituting the definitions here and here. And we follow the same process we did earlier, taking this term and this term, adding up the exponents. This time we have 2j times 2j. However, when you multiply 2j times 2j, that gives us 4, but j times j is negative 1. So that's why I put a negative in here instead of the 2j and 2j here. And so we have a real number in our denominator here. Now the numerator is a result of multiplying minus j omega ct here and a minus j omega mt here. Now the minus and the minus in front of this com these complex exponential term results in a positive in here. The third term, well we have a negative j omega c here, so that's a result of this term. And a negative negative or positive j omega mt resulting from this term. So for this middle third term here in this equation we're, is the result of multiplying this term and this term. Also we have a minus sign in here so there's a minus sign in front of this term. And finally our last term is a result of multiplying a positive j omega ct here that's shown here and a negative j omega mt here for this term. Again now grouping this term we recognize that j 2j times 2j is still a minus 4 here and so we recognize here and here forms the definition of our cosine term and we put a minus sign here due to the fact of the j times j term so here in our argument in our complex exponential we have omega c plus omega m and using the definition of a cosine we result in this term here the cosine weighted by a function of one half with a minus sign in front the last two terms here, notice we have a minus here in front of this term and a minus here in the denominator, so this will be a plus term. Same thing with this as well. All right, so we got the minus minus becomes a plus, but then you notice the form. We got e to the j plus e to the minus j with an argument omega c minus omega m. And so hence we have a definition of cosine with an argument omega c minus omega mt divided by 2. So that's our identity again. So the bottom line is that when you multiply two sinusoids together, we get the sum and difference frequencies. So in this video, I showed you how Euler's formula can be used to prove some trigonometric identities, especially identities associated that you can use for communication systems such as the one I've shown here. And I'll elaborate this further in future videos. So thanks for watching. Signing off is Dr. J.